Navy wants 10-ship unmanned ghost fleet to supplement manned force. So it says the Pentagon, as the Navy faces more complex threats to its manned ships from Russia and China, the service is moving quickly to field an unmanned ghost fleet. A new breed of armed unmanned surface combatants will add more sensors and weapons to the current fleet. In fiscal year of 2020, the Navy has budgeted $400 million dollars for two of the proposed large unmanned surface vehicles in its research and development budget line. The Navy plans to continue buying uh, two a year until um, 2024, fiscal year budget uh, 2024, for a total of about $2.7 billion. These are Navy ships with no men on them. They are big ass drones. These are 200 to 300 foot vessels 2,000 tons. I'm not sure what the final whole form will be. That's what they are using today in terms of what the Ghost Fleet buy will be. Rear Admiral Randy Kreitz, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Budget, said on Tuesday during a press budget briefing. So they are going to have these badass, crazy killer boats out there. And they're not going to be manned. This is, this is, I, I have said many times, the next conflict will be bonkers. It's going to be robot versus robot, drone versus drone, boat versus boat. An 18-year-old kid sitting there on Xbox controller controlling it all. But that doesn't mean they're safe. That's what I'm saying. Are they creating this technology so they can justify a conflict that would cover all the bases, nobody would die, the weapons companies would get their money, and uh, we would actually be able to say we're at conflict. I don't know, that's something to think about as well. Check this out. Parents blame elementary school's cell tower after fourth student diagnosed with cancer. A fourth child has been diagnosed with cancer at a San Joaquin County Elementary School and parents believe it's because of radiation caused by a cell phone tower. The towers are spread throughout the community, but it's a particular one that parents say needs to go. Quote, we had a doctor tell us that it's 100% environmental, the kind of tumor that he has, said Monica Ferrelli. Her son Mason was the second child to be diagnosed with cancer in just three years at Weston Elementary. He was 10 years old and walked by this cell phone tower daily. It's indescribable. It's really tough, she said. It's one of the hardest things that I've been through, said Joe Prime. Prime's son, Kyle, was the first diagnosed with kidney cancer in 2016, and two more kids diagnosed this year. It just seems like a coincidence is no longer a reason for all this illness, Prime said. They believe it's the cell phone tower that's harming their, their kids. Quote, kids shouldn't be guinea pigs and we shouldn't be taking chances with children's lives, Prime said. The district has had several tests done saying that the tower is safe and meets federal regulations. But some families weren't convinced and hired an expert. Quote, I wouldn't send my kids there at all. It is absolutely dangerous, said Eric Windham, an electromagnetic radiation specialist. Quote, children are still developing and their cells are still being divided. It's the worst possible time in their life to be exposed. He says it's not just a cell tower. It also transmits, transmits wireless frequencies. Instead of only going 300 yards like regular Wi-Fi, WiMAX can go 30 miles. This is kind of the, the, the thing like uh, Xfinity Wi-Fi, where you have Xfinity Wi-Fi everywhere, right? That's what this is. Like you pay for Comcast at home, so you end up getting it wherever you are. Well, they have to put these towers in to do it. And these towers, if they're close to you, which I have one close, and I'll just say this, I think that it is causing some of the things. Parents want the mast removed, but the district won't budge. Parents say the district gets a kickback of $2,000 a month to have the tower for a telephone company, but the district so far has not commented. 
Isn't it funny that the school gets paid $2,000 a month just for letting that tower sit there? Why do they have to pay them to have it sit there? It doesn't take up too much ground room, right? Makes you think. They have to pay you because it's dangerous. It's a real disappointment that it's taking moms of sick children and dads of sick children to come out and say something needs to be done. Ferelli's son Mason has also since relapsed and is undergoing brain cancer treatments well, a fourth child from a recently uh, from a, has recently been diagnosed and been taken out of school. Can you imagine your child getting brain cancer? That I don't know how they say that this is something that just you know they can treat and go away. They say it's not just a battle now for their children, but a fight for these parents. Say they won't give up. "Quote: There's a lot of kids that we love that still go to that school, so we are fighting for them." Ferelli said. The district sent out a letter to parents saying that the electric magnetic frequencies are far below federal standards and have completed a thorough investigations and do not have any plans of removing the cell phone tower on campus. Well, where are federal regulations at? That's my question. And do we need to change federal regulations or changing federal regulations? Will that harm our speeds on our phones for our Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp? That's the question I would like to ask. Would you sacrifice your fast internet if you knew that children weren't getting cancer? Personally, I would. All right. Pentagon eager to test banned missiles after discarding Cold War era nuke treaty. The INF is out the door. The Pentagon plans to test two types of missiles banned for over 30 years under the Intermediate Nuclear Forces Treaty. Reinforcing suspicions, it has been preparing for this for years. Oh, are you saying that this might have been like a plan, like a long-term plan that, say, has been in form for years? Hmm, sounds like a conspiracy theory. Pentagon officials outlined a plan to produce a low-flying cruise missile with a potential range of around uh, 1,000 kilometers and a ballistic missile capable of traveling 3,000 to 4,000 kilometers. Neither would be nuclear armed, the officials said. Though with no treaty to abide by, there would be little holding them back from embracing a cold return to a Cold War-style arms race. The tests are scheduled for immediately after the U.S. official withdrawal from the INF Treaty with Russia is finalized. Not good. 